Well, last week we started talking about what are spiritual gifts. We're in this series called Living in the Spirit. And we learned the first week that you and I, when we become followers of Jesus, the Spirit of God lives within us. The, Bi within us. the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and God lives in you. And we learned that as a believer, we have connection, we have access to the greatest power in the universe. That's the power of God in our lives. And we begin to look at what are spiritual gifts. And some of you probably know what those are and you've been around before. Some of you probably have taken a spiritual gifts test and you kind of know a little bit about that. And so, uh, but many of you don't. And so we're looking at what is a spiritual gift. And last week we started talking about that. And uh, a spiritual gift is a gift that is received by a believer at the moment of their salvation. It is given by the Holy Spirit. He gives spiritual gifts to whomever he chooses, however he chooses. They're not our choice, but we can pray for more spiritual gifts. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we can ask God to make our spiritual gifts stronger uh, and so forth. So uh, that is a spiritual gift, but it is supernaturally empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. So if you have a natural talent of leadership, then you naturally lead. You can get better at that. You can learn about leading. But if you have the spiritual gift of leadership, along with the natural talent of leadership, you have something that is supernaturally empowered by God, all right? And the difference between secular leadership and spiritual leadership is something like that that is completely empowered by the Holy Spirit of God will put you in a position to bring glory to God and to bring much fruit about in your life to please God with your life. And so that's what a spiritual uh, fruit is. And so I told you last week I had too many points to finish. So we're going to pick up reading again this week. I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, um, uh, several verses there again. And let me just remind us about these spiritual gifts. Uh, now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. So in other words, he says, different people have different talents. There are different needs in the church. God is in charge of all of it, okay? And then he says, uh, there are varieties of activities, but it's the same God who empowers them all in everyone. So once again, a spiritual gift is different than a natural talent. It can coincide with a natural talent. I gave you an example of that in my own life. Uh, so, but whatever gift you have is supernaturally empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. And the more you trust God, the more you have faith, the more you grow in your spirit, uh, the more you have uh, the fullness of the spirit in your life, the greater you're going to be able to operate in the power of the spirit and the greater you're going to be able to operate in those gifts. And so um, then he goes on to say, um, to each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. Now, let me tell you what he's talking about. The manifestation of the spirit, the working out of the Holy Spirit through spiritual gifts in our lives. It is for the common good. A spiritual gift is never given to you for your own selfish gain. It is never to be used or abused, though they often are. And I give people this example. Um, have you ever seen a, a preacher that, and, and I don't throw rocks or criticize preachers, I believe anybody that's preaching the word of God and trying to bring people to God, I'm not going to lay my tongue on God's man or God's woman. I'm going to leave them alone unless they're in spiritual error. Uh, I won't say anything against them because I believe that God is in control, control of that, not me. Um, but you see that there are preachers that abuse their gift. There are some, we can all see a few of these. There aren't many. Um, and a lot of the ones that we think may be guilty of this aren't. But there are some preachers that abuse their gift for financial gain. Maybe they're really talented at something. Maybe they're really gifted on television and they're able to manipulate people to get a lot of money and so on and so forth. Now, just because one person does that doesn't mean that the spiritual gift is not active. In the same way, you, if you had a bad experience at a restaurant, maybe the food was spoiled, uh, maybe it was cold, undercooked, your waitress, your waiter didn't do anything to help you, they did not assist you at all, you would have a bad experience in that restaurant. But what you would not do 
is say, you know what? That restaurant was terrible and I'm never going to eat food again. Nobody does that. Now, it might be true that you don't go to that restaurant again and that's perfectly legitimate. But you're not gonna give up eating because you had a bad experience at a restaurant, are you? In the same way, just because you see some Christian that might abuse a spiritual gift does not give us the right to ignore spiritual gifts or not to go to church or not to use our gifts for God. In the same way, just because one bad experience at a restaurant uh, sours you toward that restaurant, you're still going to eat again. And in the same way, I believe this is what God expects from us. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 14, verse 1, it says, Pursue love, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Now, I want to give you just a few examples and explain just a little bit of what some of the spiritual gifts are. This is not an, an extensive list, a comprehensive list, and I don't believe there really is a singular comprehensive list of gifts, spiritual gifts in the Bible. There are some in the Old Testament, there's some in the New Testament. But what we see here is some of the gifts that you might be familiar with. Maybe you're not, that's why I wanna explain them to you. There's the gift of preaching. Sometimes that's known as the gift of exhortation where a man of God or a woman who's teaching the word of God can take the Bible and through the power of the Holy Spirit can explain it in a way that people in the congregation get it. And what God does with that is he uses pastors in that way. But I wanna tell you this, it's not just pastors that have this gift. There are some of you that have that gift. Maybe you're not a pastor. Uh, you may never lead a church that way. You never, may never sit on a platform and teach. Can I give you just a great example of it? Did you see what Megan did a while ago? Did you see how she took the scripture and she showed us how we need to cast our burdens and our cares on God and how that ties into giving? Did anybody get a blessing out of that? Anybody get a blessing from that? Do you know what that was? That was not natural talent. Now she has natural talent, don't get me wrong. But that was the power of one of those spiritual gifts. I believe the gift of preaching or exhortation. You see how that works? Okay, so that's how spiritual gifts work. There's the gift of teaching. And that is not just teaching the Word of God, but being able to study the Word of God and dig out truths from the Word of God that are gonna help the body of Christ. There's the gift of evangelism. That's the ability to see people come to know Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. There's the gift of speaking in tongues. I wanna be talking about that in a couple weeks. I'm gonna explain what it is. I'm gonna explain what it isn't. I'm gonna explain how it can be abused. And I'm gonna explain how some people, because of spiritual or, or scriptural error, have come down and said that that is wrong or that doesn't exist. We're gonna talk about that. You don't wanna miss that. It's gonna be an interesting uh, message. And uh, in fact, it might even make a couple, of, a couple of people mad and that would be worth coming to hear. All right, so um, there's the gift of encouragement. You ever notice that some people have that ability during a difficult emotional time, they have the power of the Spirit of God in their life to be able to minister to you in a spiritual way. There's the gift of wisdom, that supernatural wisdom uh, from God. There's the gift of discernment. There's the gift of service. There's the gift of mercy. I, I talked about how my wife has that gift. There's the gift of hospitality. I talked about how some of you have that supernaturally powered gift in your life. There's the gift of giving. Let me explain that. Uh, the gift of giving is different than the commandment to tithe. All right, the Bible's very clear that as believers, we must, in, in worship, in, in thankfulness, that we are to give back to God. We're to be generous. God so loved the world that he gave. The, the way that you are more like Christ than at any moment in your life is when you're giving. And it doesn't just have to be at the church, uh, though it could be, and, and some of that should go on at the church. But there are people that give to other things, give in their neighborhood, and it is a, an act of generosity. And the more you grow in your faith, the more generous you're gonna become. Okay, but the gift of giving is a spiritual gift that God empowers some people to be able to give over and above their regular giving. That's what that gift is. And the reason God gives that spiritual gift is because it is used to finance the kingdom of God. It is used to further the gospel of the kingdom of God. And so when a person has the gift of giving, oftentimes they have the ability to earn more money than the average person. 
And it's not always the case, but often they have the ability to earn more money than the average person. And what they have in their heart, the reason they want to earn more money is not because they want to buy a jet one day, but because they want to be able to give more than they're giving now. And that is a supernaturally empowered gift. I've seen people that have that gift of giving and the more they give, the more they get. It is just the most astounding thing you have ever seen. That is a spiritual gift that comes from God. And often with that, um, the, the Spirit of God will lead people to have discernment about which ministries to give to. Now, the Bible is clear that we're to give to the local church. That's the storehouse, okay? That's where we begin. Uh, but when we give above and beyond, that is an acting the spiritual gift of giving, I believe. And then there are some people that have the ability to earn money. I've known people in my life, had people part of ministries uh, that I've been a part of before that had this unnatural, it seemed like, ability to earn money. And they just gave and they gave and they gave. And the more they gave, the more God blessed them. And the greater they had the ability to give. And it was just this big, big old circle. They just kept on going and they just kept on giving. Um, not everybody has that gift, but you do not have to have the spiritual gift of giving in order to give. In the same way, you don't have to have the spiritual gift of mercy in order to have mercy on people. You don't have to have the gift of encouragement to be an encouragement to people. You see what I'm saying? Uh, we can operate in the power of the Spirit, and God, in our spiritual fruit, begins to grow us to be more like Jesus Christ. Well, there are also, uh, there's, I believe, the gift of music. I believe many in our worship team have that power of the Holy Spirit in their life to be able to bring others into worship. That's a powerful gift. Uh, there's the gift, I call it arts and crafts. If you look in the Old Testament, you know what's so interesting? Um, God in the scripture tells us that many of the people that worked on the tabernacle or the temple were normal working guys. They weren't religious leaders. They were not like some big mega corporation. They were, I don't even know that they were necessarily even very wealthy or well-to-do, but they had this supernatural gift. And the Bible tells us that God put his spirit on them to be able to do these beautifications, this building, arts and crafts. And if you read in the Old Testament, you'll find that some of these people that worked on the temple or people that worked uh, on the tabernacle were supremely gifted. And it was not just because they were really good at what they did. They were empowered by the Spirit of God. Well, I could spend more and more time on that and I won't. But the fact is there are spiritual gifts um, that include prayer and uh, leadership and administration and supernatural faith. So that's the spiritual gift. So here's the next question I want to answer. What is the purpose of a spiritual gift? Well, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's to point people to Jesus and to glorify him. Spiritual gifts are meant to point people to Jesus. Everything in our life is meant to point people to Jesus. Your spiritual gifts the things that God gives you, your home, your car. Yeah, have you ever thought about this? Your home and your car are meant to serve Jesus. Are you serving Jesus with your home? Some people have the ability in that to host people. They host small group. They host uh, teenage small groups. They host kids from their kids' school. And they bring them home and let them spend the night on Saturday night and bring them to church on Sunday. Some people use their car to bring people to church with them. We are to use our gift to bring glory to God. And then uh, we are to use our spiritual gift to help others. We have a saying here, not original with us, but we have a saying here, every member is a minister. Everybody is to be a part. Everybody has something that you can do. Everybody can make a con contribution. And so we believe that God wants all of us to be a part of that contribution. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Let me just break that down for you real quick. First of all, you're a masterpiece created by God. You're not to go on a shelf somewhere. You're to be used. Secondly, you're created in Christ Jesus to do good works. So you're in Christ and you're to do good things. 
for him and for his glory. You're not to do it to earn his love. You can't earn his love. He loves you already. You're not to earn, it, earn salvation through your good works. You can't do that. But you sure can please God by doing good works. Notice which God prepared in advance for us to do. Do you know before you were ever born, God knew what you were going to look like? He knew what your name was going to be. He knew when you were going to be born, where you were going to be born, to whom you were going to be born. He knew what your personality was going to be like. He knew what your gifts were going to be like. That's why I tell people, God has never been surprised at your gift. Some people are kind of impressed with their gifts, kind of impressed with themselves. You ever met those kind of people? Sometimes we meet them every morning when we look in the mirror, right? The truth of the matter is, though, uh, God is never surprised. I mean, if you're like this incredible singer, the angels of heaven have never gone, hey, hey, Jesus, come over here. Look over the banister. How awesome is she? High five. Never done that. You know why? Because God has never been surprised. He knows your gifts. You know why? He created them and he gave them to you. And so what he wants us to do is to bring glory to him with those things. Spiritual gifts are the tools that are used to produce spiritual fruit in us. And spiritual gifts are not the height of spirituality. We're going to see in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in a couple of weeks that Paul said, do not judge one another's spirituality by what your gifts are. There were people in the church at Corinth there. They thought that because they had one particular kind of gift, that they were more important than the other people that had another kind of gift. Or that they thought their gift was better. And Paul said, hey, if you're going to desire the gifts, and he told us to, he said, why don't you desire the gift of prophecy? Now, the gift of prophecy, it's kind of a broad thing. But the fact is, and I'll explain a little bit in about two or three weeks. But the gift of prophecy, in some form, is taking the Word of God and explaining it to people in a way that they understand it and get it. And so when he's saying desire this gift, he's saying that we should desire, we can get more than one gift if God so chooses to give us that. We can pray for it. We can ask for it. We can ask God to enhance our gifts, to make us stronger in our gifts. And he said, that's a wonderful thing. But he also said, don't forget that love is the most important thing. You can have the most special gift in the world. You can have the most gifts of any person ever. But if you do not have love, then God says, you're simply wasting your time. You see, we're not to use spiritual gifts as a comparison, as a measuring stick, as a way to say, you're better than I am, and I'm better than she is, and she's worse than him. You don't, you don't do that. The fact is, God said that we are to operate in love. We're to operate in love. Well, here's... One other thing I want to really encourage you about, well, you should never confuse spiritual gifts with spiritual life. Let me let that sink in. I want to say it again. Don't ever confuse spiritual gifts with spiritual life. Did you know that in the power of the Holy Spirit of God, and only because of His power, and only because of His grace, that sometimes God uses people that are sinful, even though they're believers, he uses them for his glory. You say, oh man, that's horrible. No, actually, that's wonderful. Because the fact is, if God did not choose to forgive our sins and to cover our sins with the blood of Jesus Christ and wash them away so that he has declared us to be justified in his sight and to be forever forgiven, then not a single one of us would ever be able one time to serve God or please God with our life. You know why? Because we're all sinners and we all fall short. But thank God that he gave us Jesus Christ and his blood to wash away our sins. And you know what? God has used me many times in spite of myself. God has got glory out of my life many times in spite of my sin. Now, I'm not suggesting that we can just simply go out here and live however and not ever worry about it. I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting that we can go out and be an absolute liar and you know, break into people's houses and steal things, murder people, uh, and stuff like that. It's, oh yeah, I'm good. God loves me. That, that's not what we're saying. But we're simply saying this, that because of his grace, because of his love, and because of his forgiveness, he will use you. And can I just say this? Because of that, 
you and I should never feel like we have the right to point out the little speck that somebody in somebody else's eye while we ignore the plank that is in ours. Remember Jesus giving that illustration? That was actually um, Hebrew humor. It was gross exaggeration. And they thought that was hilarious. And Jesus was using humor uh, against the Pharisees to mock them. He said, yeah, some of you guys are worried about the little speck of sawdust in your neighbor's eye and you got a log sticking out of yours. And so what God is telling us this, is this. Be thankful for his grace. Bless him because of his love. Thank him because of his mercy. You ever just stop and say, thank you, God, for your mercy? Thank you, God, for your grace. We ought to do that more often, don't you think? Well, what's the purpose of a spiritual gift? Well, it's to please God. And then finally, the last question is this. What do I do with my spiritual gift? What is it? Well, it's from God, supernaturally empowered by him. What do we do with it? We use it to serve the church. We use it to serve others. We use it to bring glory to God. We use it to build up the body of Christ. And what do we do with our gift? Well, that's pretty simple. You use it. You use it. There are some that don't understand the power of this. Because you may feel like that your contribution is not great. But you know that if everybody in their contribution will give what? God has gifted them to do, then the church in turn will be great. And it will function the way God wants it to function. And it will be a great, great blessing. First Peter 4.10 says, each one of us should use whatever gift he's received to serve others. That's it in a nutshell. If you're not willing to serve others, then you're not willing to use your gift for God's glory. It's easy to use our gift for our own glory, right? It's easy to point out how good we are especially if we have a gift that is like often used in front of people. Oh, I've got the gift of music or I've got the gift of singing or I've got the gift to lead worship. Oh, look at me. No, we shouldn't do that. I shouldn't say, oh, look, I've got the gift of teaching and preaching and leading, whatever. And uh, well, look at me. No, we shouldn't be that way. The fact is you need to use your gift to serve others. And God says, when you do, it brings glory to him. Let me just say this. There are some when it comes to spiritual gifts, they deny the gifts. They deny they even exist. Some deny that they have a gift. And then there are others that abuse the gifts. Some make the spiritual gifts a mark of spirituality because they have a certain gift and others don't. They think they're better. Some will use their spiritual gift to elevate themselves, to make themselves seem more important than they are. Or others will even elevate it over Jesus or the church. But thank God, there are many of you. There are many in this church. There are many in our circle of influence. There are many in our, uh, in our lives that choose to use their gift. Aren't you glad for that? I'm so glad for that. When I come into this church and I see so many people serving, people that are serving in guest services and in the parking lot when it's cold and rainy and man, or when it's hot, I look at those people and I think, thank God. God, they're willing to serve and they're making a difference. The people that serve in small groups and the people that serve in worship and, and, and that's just go this throughout the church. Thank God there are some that use their gifts. And in Avalon Church, there are many that use, your, their, that, that use your gifts. And I want you to know how much I appreciate this. Listen to Psalm 100 verse two. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. I read that verse a lot. You know why? Because it's easy to get your eyes on people and get upset. It's easy to get your eyes on circumstances and be a little discouraged. It's easy to be working and working and working and you think, man, I've done such a good job, but nobody notices. And it just kind of takes the heart out of you. But you know what God tells us to do? Serve the Lord with gladness. Oh man, I hope that I can serve God with gladness. You know, sometimes there are many, many temptations as a pastor, as a church staff member, as an elder or a deacon or someone that serves in this church. It is really easy to get discouraged. You can look at what other people should be doing, what other people ought to be doing, and it's easy to point that out at them, isn't it? 
Well, look at what this one's doing. I've been over here working, uh, working my fingers to the bone and nobody noticed me and look at what this person's doing. Or you think, well, I wouldn't do it that way if I was in charge. Well, go find somewhere where you can be in charge, all right? And do it your way, all right? The truth of the matter is, just like I said last week, it's not about you. It's not about me. It's about pleasing God with my gift. It's about pleasing God with my life. Serve the Lord with gladness. Oh man, I hope we have more people in our church like that. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve the Lord with gladness. Amen. Oh, I love that. And that's what it helps me and encourages me to serve God with my life. And then finally, the last thing, Matthew chapter 20, verse 28, the son of man did not come to be served. He came to serve others. I hope today that you will use your gift for God. I hope you will recognize it and see how that God will bless you if you will. And this is the prayer I want you to pray today. It's a very simple prayer. Holy Spirit, use me. Holy Spirit, use me. Here I am, God. Will you use me? Isaiah did that in the Old Testament. You know what he said? God was looking for somebody to serve. He was looking for somebody to step in the gap. He was looking for somebody to lead. You know what Isaiah did? He said, here am I. Send me. Here I am. Oh, choose me. Choose me. Choose me. You ever do that when you're a kid? Maybe you got chosen to be the leader at the water line or the boss of the water line. I used to love being the boss at the water line. I would just kind of like dunk people's head in and I'd, then I'd lose my position as the leader of the water line, you know? But what God is looking for is not the greatest ability. You don't have to have the greatest ability to serve God. You know what he's looking for? He's looking for the greatest availability. He's looking for somebody that they'll say, in the middle of this pandemic, in the middle of what this world is going through, in the middle of the pain and the sorrow, here am I. Send me. Holy Spirit, use me. And that's my prayer for you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would use us. God, there's so many people that are joining us in our online community and those that are in our in-person community, God, that we need you. We know that we have the Holy Spirit in us. And God, so we're just simply asking today, would you use me? God, I pray. I pray for our church. There's so many people that could be used in such a great way. I pray that you'd use this church for your glory. I pray that it would be a light. I pray for people that are that are needy, that need Jesus. And that somebody at Avalon Church would be the one that would say, here am I, send me, here am I, use me. Give us that attitude, God. Give us that desire. And thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us at Avalon Church. Share this message with a friend and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single video. You can also join us every Sunday live on the Avalon Church Facebook page. If you feel led to give and support our mission of bringing people wherever they are into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, you can do so by clicking the Give button. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time.